Welcome everybody to Life's a Pitch TV. Join me, Russell Osman, and Terry Butcher. Uh, we're a little bit short here tonight, Terry. We've got one or two people missing, a little bit of illness in the camp. Allegedly. Allegedly, Allegedly yes. Yeah. We'll have to get a doctor's report somewhere <laughs> along the line. So uh, it's just us. It's International Week, of course. Yes. Um, maybe they're away watching the internationals or on an international break themselves. So, uh, But it's just us two. As yeah. usual. So we can delve uh, a little bit deeper into one or two things tonight. Um, and obviously, first people we have to thank are our sponsors. Yes, our main sponsor is DPS Tech. Ginger Pickle. All About Hearing. Venue 16 and Olsen Logistics. Fred Olsen, new one. And of course, mustn't forget Sound 4 Pro Audio. Come Hither Design. Forward Floors. The Hudson Group. There the we Hudson go. Group, that's yeah. the lot. Yep, that's that out of the way. Where do you want to start, Terry? What about Ginger Pickle? Now, what is Ginger Pickle, right? I thought it was, <laughs> when I first heard it, it was a company from Norwich, of course, so I sort of raised my heckles a bit. <laughs> and we have an audience tonight, an audience of three, and I say this for the best audience we've... Well, I say that every week. It's the best audience we've ever had. You do. You do <laughs> say <laughs> there that we go, There week. we go, yeah. They're so, the noisiest audience we're going to have all week as well. Yeah. The only audience we're going to have all week. So Ginger Pickle, right? When I first heard it, I thought it was Ed Sheeran. Then I was told it was a marketing company from up the road. And then it, it is a marketing company, but it's not something you put on a sandwich, is it, really? Ginger Pickle. Definitely not. No. no. I, wish it, I wish it was. I could do with a, a nice jar of pickle somewhere along the line. So anybody that wants to send in donations and cakes and everything else like that. Do you, you like know? a bit of pickle on your cheese? Yes, I do, yes. Do you know what? You know what? There you go, yeah. yeah. A bit of cheddar and a bit of pickle. does give you wind, though, but there we go. It's another <laughs> problem, especially when you get to our age, Russell. You know, this, oh. these things happen. These things happen. Speak for yourself, Terence. <laughs> right. Okay, what are we going to delve into? Well, it gives us a chance, because when we do the show normally, we don't really get much of a chance to... What, with the other two? With the other two that are not here today, yes. Yeah. mustn't mention them, but we don't get a chance to really discuss, not tactics, but the sort of feeling we have about the team, because the time fans like to see... You know, people that have played the game and their sort of recollections and their their history. But when you actually play the game, what what do you see from the back? How do we play yeah. and all that kind of thing? Yeah. Well, if we, if we look at the the season on a whole and the way it started this year, I think everybody is extremely pleased with the way that they've uh, started the season. You know, to be in the position where they are after just gaining promotion. Came out the blocks very, very um, nicely and uh, compact at the start of the season. Great win at Sunderland and just maintained a, a nice bit of momentum. Um, I think the international break, break came at a good time for them, though you're never quite sure. You know, if, if somebody comes back with an injury, I think Wes Burns might have a, yeah, a bit of a niggle yeah. Yeah. Uh, through the international break. You're never quite sure how that works, but... Up until the international break, uh, and considering we were finishing with that um, great fire back at Cardiff, uh, the Cardiff game, 2 0 down to win 3 uh, 2. That was fantastic. So the side has done brilliant so far. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you. When you win a game like that, I mean, we've done that before, come back from, from the dead sort of thing and, and, and snatch victory. It, it's such a lovely feeling. You want that to continue. And then the international yeah. boys go away. Some of the players that have stayed, or the majority have probably had the weekend off and they've been able to go away and do things and recharge. It's something that we never got, especially in 8081. We never had the opportunity to, to recharge because the internationals were midweek anyway. So yeah. if you played in the internationals as you, as you did, then you don't get a break. So you just continue. I know you don't do a lot of training when you're with, away with your countries. This is more about shape and everything else like that. But you don't get that break. And I think it's great to recharge. But from a fan's point of view, you want to get back to Portman Road as quick as yeah. you can because the 3-2 game was just sensational. You know, we had the Leeds game, obviously didn't go our way. But it's, it's the sort of football that they're playing now, the sort of, you know, the atmosphere, the experience of going down to Portman Road is something that you want really every week. Well, we find it very exciting. We're, we're down there and we've, we've uh, a very privileged position in the director's box to watch the game from. The prawn um, sandwiches, we have lots of very good prawn sandwiches. Very good They're very prawn nice. Sandwiches, but but I, must say the, I must say the quality of the prawn sandwiches this year is a bit <laughs> exceptional. So as well as on the pitch, on the plate, Ipswich Town have really stepped up, really stepped up. They have stepped up. It's it's, it's pretty nice there, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's a nice yeah. way to spend a, a Sunday lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, but I think last, last year we had 
a couple of bottles of wine for lunch and when we went there and all that sort of thing as well. I mean, we had a bit of food as well, but a couple of bottles of wine. That wine doesn't seem to have appeared so much this season, do you think? It's been no. very absent. Did no, it get a free transfer somewhere or what? I don't know. I think we need to have a word about that, don't we? We do. We need to get that in order. But if that's all we're complaining about, then it's, we've done pretty well. Yep. Yeah. So, so the food's good. The football's good. <laughs> I like the way they play out from the back. Um, I mean, that's where we... I mean, you could liken yourself to uh, uh, Cameron P- Burgess. Pele? Pele? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Not Pele. Not Pele. You know, and, <laughs> And not anybody that is a ball-playing centre-half like yourself coming out from the back. <laughs> um, but the way that they do keep possession of the ball, and if you're in uh, Cameron Burgess's position, are you happy with how the the team looks in front of you and to the side of you and behind you with a goalkeeper? Would you be happy in that position at the moment? Well, I had my doubts about Cameron Burgess, to be honest, when he first came in. Um, he's proved me wrong, and uh, pleasantly so. I think there's, there's, he's been great. Uh, he's not the most. He's a language sort of player with the you know with the ball. He's not quick. He's but he's good left foot, good diagonal pass. He could do more on the ball really if he's if yeah. he's given the opportunity. But when you've got like Sam Morsey coming to get the ball, Luongo's and when Evans gets in the team, they they they're good skillful midfield players. So his objective is to win the ball and give it to them if they can, or give it to your wider players. Yeah. You, know, you know, very rarely hit long passes up to strikers. Very rarely do that. It's more long passes out to you know in, in diagonals. But you've got to be happy with that. You know, yeah. it, it keeps you on your toes, and it, it, you actually get good touches of the ball. But I think, particularly someone like Cameron, who's not so much used to that in the lower leagues. Um, he's he's really come on leaps and bounds. Yeah, so, got, I mean, you're, you're a ball playing centre half. You enjoyed yeah. it. We 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 would have loved to have played in today's system, wouldn't we? Yeah, but listen, I I used to enjoy hitting a long pass, you know, and maybe fifty percent of the time I, I'd get it to the target. Um, so obviously, fifty percent of the time you're giving the ball away. Now that's sort of frowned upon a, a little bit. But just going back to Cameron Burgess, uh, just for a second, he got a. Horrendous facial injury last year, didn't he? You know, and he did ever so well to come back from that. And, I've, and I've had a few of them as well, yeah. You oh, see my face. I've been alongside you. My face is horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you spend more time in intensive care and emergency wards and stuff yeah. like that than any I, other centre-half like, half that I played with. I like hospital food, to be honest. Yeah, Do you? Yeah, not really, no. Well, you got used to it by now. Cool. Um, I mean, I, I played alongside uh, Steve Walsh at Leicester, uh, Neil Ruddock, you got injured a lot more the than thin, either of those. The two. thin Neil Ruddock, yeah. The thin Neil Ruddock yeah. when he was fit, and, yeah, and funny. Well, he's still funny, you know. And uh, yeah, but if you like in what what you were doing with the uh, Cameron Burgess's position, and I look at myself as being on the other side of the pitch where Wolfie plays, would you be happy with the uh, the way I would be playing at the moment if I was Wolfie? If you were, if you were, if Wolfie, I was Wolfie, not yourself. If you I were Wolfie, I'd, yeah, I'd shake his blooming head. I would. I'd get oh, hold of him. I'd, just, I'd <laughs> wait. Come on, wake up, you. You can be. Yeah? He could be far better than what he is. I think there's a lot more to come out of him if he allows that to happen. You told me that a couple of times myself. No, I never did that. No. <laughs> Wolfie is a player that's got the lot. Really, he's got. Yeah. He's got a good pace. He's he can he can read the game okay. Not too bad. He's good, and comfortable on the ball. He can, he can, he can score goals at the other end. He's, he's, gen- he's got the lot. But there's one thing that he doesn't have, and I think when scouts come down to Portman Road to have a look at him from the Premier League, yeah, they would say what he doesn't have is that extra little bit of bite and aggression that really strong centre halves have. You look at um, uh, Chiellini of of Italy. You know, yeah. you're talking about a world class cool. player there. Yeah, um, he's a player. I know he's got the bent nose and everything else like that. And Wolfie's very pretty, but. At the end of the day, sometimes you know you've got to get in there. You've got to put your head in there. You've got to make sure that you that you deliver. And you've, yeah. and you've also got to unsettle the um, the forwards that come at you because they're good forwards in the you championship. You mean impose yourself a little impose bit yourself. more with the, the yeah, opposition. You know, yeah, you know what it's like. You've, yeah. you've done it. We've we've all done it. It's a different era, but is it a different era? You know, you've still got to be strong, and you've still got to make a, the the strikers respect you yeah. and fear you as well. Well, you're trying to get a little advantage over the person that you're playing against, and if he's skillful and quick yes you've got to be able to match that but you need to get on on top of them so if you can if you can test his character and his personality um see what he's made of listen you've got to be you've got to be a lot more careful nowadays with all the cameras about because in the old days you could give somebody a bit of a clip around the ear and just get away with it you know and 
shake each other up for the first few minutes. Now you, you can't seem to do that. You know, you've, you've got to be a little bit craftier when you're trying to intimidate somebody. Yeah. I mean, Sam Morsi's got to be yeah. careful. He likes to give somebody but we, a little we used, around the There was only probably again. one camera in covering our game, and we used to know where it was. And when <laughs> it was pointing down the other end, that's where you could that's clip it. people's ears. Oh, right. no. But would you be happy with, at the back, you know, we've, we've like, we conceded four against Leeds. We conceded two against Cardiff. You know, we have conceded, you know, n- a number of goals this season. Would you yeah. be happy about the fact that we do concede goals? Or would you, you know, because we used to, you used to, you've got a finger and a half. You used to point at people and just say, "Hey, <laughs> do your job better." And that yeah, was well, that was something that people needed. Well, I, th- I think that's something that's in a way gone out of the game because players seem to accept uh, that the Gunners can see goals, and when they do, they just say, "All right, well, let's get on with the game." We used to sort of have a right go at each other, Ooh, didn't we? Yeah, oh, we did. you know, and if it was a goalkeeper's fault, Paul Cooper, he would get it in the <laughs> neck. If if it was your fault, yeah. Can you imagine if you're playing alongside Kevin Beattie or Alan Hunter? You made a mistake that cost you a goal and Hunter was playing alongside you. It was like somebody trying to rip your throat out. They would do They would do as well. And, and the respect that we had for those guys as well, you had to apologise to them and just say, you, know, you used to go in the dressing room and just say, sorry, lads, and let you down, all that yeah. sort of thing. That was the first thing that you did when you went through the door. And the players accepted that, were angry at you. But they, and they used to tell you, used to say as yeah. well. Yeah. But I, mean, it's, I remember playing at Everton. Uh, and a uh, long cross comes into our penalty area, uh, and I'm thinking it's in between me and Paul Cooper, and it's lofty, high in the air. Coop doesn't come, Paul Cooper doesn't come. I think he's going to get there, and the striker gets in and nods it in the net. And I said to Paul Cooper, you know, what are you doing? You know, you're not coming for the ball. You never he, said that. You he, never said that. Uh, no, I did. Well, it was, I never said that. A, I a couple of other words in there as well. <laughs> and I said, we're well, not coming for the effing ball sort of thing. And he just said, he said, well, you're not having a good game either, are you? <laughs> it's like, wow. He was like, wow. Yeah, but that's well, charm. Fair play. Yeah, yeah, fair play. So you just move on. But you do. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it hurts me if I can see the goal. It hurts you badly yeah. if you if we can see the goal at any stage through any reason. And as a manager, we've both been managers. You're frustrated as anything because they why have we conceded a goal? Someone's got to be at fault when you concede a goal, unless it's an absolute worldie. Yeah, and there used to be a lot of finger pointing. You know, if you made a mistake, you knew somebody was going to be giving you a mouthful and pointing a finger straight at you. You know, and you got nowhere to hide then. You knew whether it was your fault or not. You know, but, it's, but and you, when but you go back to the Leeds goals that we conceded, <laughs> Leif Davis should have done better on the far post. Lucky could have helped him out a little bit so it's a little bit six of one half a dozen of the other who takes more more blame was that for the first goal the second goal then just got a little bit sloppy and I think now and again the whole of the back four back back five just have to be tight as a unit you know and and be prepared to be stronger with each other yeah you know you sit in and it's not just our team it's a lot of teams that we watch, whether it's Premier League, Championship, League One, League Two. Goals go in and people just walk back up to the halfway line as if it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Oh, it does matter. I know it does. And it's, it's um, you know, it, it seems to be this season, especially with town, it seems to be like the Kevin Keegan philosophy. We're going to score more goals than you. So it, it, yeah. in a way, it's great entertainment for the fans. It's nervy and it's <laughs> nerve wracking. But, you know, that's, it seems to be that way. You know, ideally, you want to win five nils and four nils and keep clean sheets. And which, what they did last year. But it's easier to keep a clean sheet in League One than it far, than far easier than the championship. Yeah. 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 So, so, OK, so you're, you're at the back in your Cameron Burgess position. Are you happy looking at um, George Hurst up the front there as a target man? Well, I think Tanner got a great choice. I think, was it you that, that said to me about um, Big Freddie, I don't think it was you. I think it was Mark or even Phil, who are not here, of course. So um, they, they're the ones that you know. It's a question that uh, Freddie Ladapo, and they were saying that is there is a you know is there a future <laughs> at the club for Freddie Ladapo? Of course and, there is. And we we love Freddie Freddie Ladapo. He's a cult yeah. hero. He is. I mean, I say cult, and I haven't made a mistake with the spelling. He's a cult hero. But he's he, you know, he, he comes on and he comes on. And that's something Mark Murphy never did on air, by the way. But uh, it was it's a it's a really good. I haven't got mine either, but uh, it's a really good thing that that he's that he's there because he offers an alternative. I I like to see 
Strikers hold the ball up. I like to see, you know, contribute and, and smash defenders, but you obviously can't do that as much these days. But there's a great combination with, with Hurst and you've obviously got the new the new guy as well um, coming in. So it's it's a real, it's a good fight for the position, yeah. but they offer different things and you've got to have yeah. that within your squad. And I think this squad in particular, with you know, the way Kieran's picked it, is, is very flexible um, and he can pick, you know, it's what, Horses for courses, sort of thing. Yeah. Well, I was having a, a little chat at the end of the the Cardiff game with uh, one of our ex teammates who was um, a guest here not too long ago, Mickey Stockwell. And Mickey, he was um, he was saying that he thought Freddie Ladapo was a little bit fortunate to get his couple of goals, and you know he's a bit. Um, sort of reactive to how the game is played and it sort of it sent me back on my heels a little bit and I thought well Mickey hold on if the ball is bouncing around the six yard box you can guarantee that if Freddie Ladapo is on the pitch he will be the one Ipswich player in that six yard box prepared to uh, put his foot in go in where the bullets are flying and then get the what they might call the lucky goal going off his heel off his shoulder off his face off the top of his head off the the backside or whatever he is the one more likely than anybody else to get that tapping from inside the six yard box and you don't get that by being um reactive you get that by you know gambling and being in the right place at the right time like Lineker you played with Lineker for Bloody years. What was Lineker good at? He was scoring goals. He wasn't good at anything what else. else but no, he couldn't goals. do anything yeah, else. He couldn't, no. couldn't, couldn't head a queue. Yeah, no. It was unbelievable. Couldn't head a queue. Yeah. Well, you, like call him, you called him Snoop Dogg. Right? Snoop, Snoop Freddy. Freddy. Big Freddy. Yeah, I love him, yeah. You no, called I him Snoop Dogg. Great. And he's, he's great. But he's, he snoops around the penalty area, isn't yeah. he? Is there a verb called snoop to snoop? To, to snoop. To snoop. I snoop, you snoop. He snoops. I, think yeah. I was going to say sniff dog when he sniffs it, but it doesn't really go very well. Snoop, <laughs> snoop dog <laughs> doesn't sniff. He sniffs yeah. goals, nothing else, nothing else. I'll get, get, get away with that. Get away with that one. Get away with that one. Yeah. yeah not no, to be sniffed at, yeah. I, yeah, I, I think he's great. I think he's been brilliant since he's come here. You know, and I think people underestimate him. Oh, I think the opponents they underestimate. They think he's a one-trick pony. They think he's he's big, strong, holds the ball up, but he, he's not because he's, you see, if he holds the ball up and, and lays it off and it goes wide, he's in that box. Yeah, he wants to get goals and he makes good runs as well. Yeah, you know, Hurst, they all make good runs. That's why they're good strikers. But you know, and the quality of the ball in now. Yeah, and um, we're obviously going to you know talk about the signings and the new signings and things like this. But the quality of the ball in now is better. Yeah. So the squad has improved. The game plans improved. It's been flexible particularly with the teams that they've played. But he, we've got goals in the team. As a, as a centre-backs, oh, centre yeah. you love it. Now, question for you. Would you, when the team scores all these goals, and obviously, you know, goals at the other end from where we play, or yeah. played, would you make the run-up to go and celebrate? Cool. 50 yards, 60 yards to celebrate with your teammates? I didn't very often. No, I didn't either. No, <laughs> I, didn't. I didn't either. It was far it too was, far It was more of a wave, wasn't yeah. it? It was a wave. Was, well done, well lads. Well done, lads. That's yeah. it, yeah. yeah. And we just yeah. trot back, yeah. 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 Um... No, I was never a great one for that. If if it was close to the end of the game, especially, it's far far too far to, to go and come back into your own half just for a celebration. I'll tell you who was good at that, at celebrating goals, Rio Ferdinand. Yeah. Rio Ferdinand. I'll tell you what, you, you look on, on the goal celebrations from a lot of the players with England, with Man United and everything else. One of the first players there is Rio Ferdinand. Oh, see. He must He's be off. quick, by the way. <laughs> oh, he is. He must be quick. He just, and, and you see David Beckham's on there as well. Because they're yeah. the shots. They're the money-making shots. They're the shots that are on the yeah, papers the, the next yeah. day. and everything. So yeah. at the end of the day, they're very shrewd. Yeah, Get on top of someone's shoulders when they've just scored and all that sort of thing as well. But you, as people like Leif Davis, you can't really get on top of his shoulders, can you, really? Because we we'd, we'd, we'd hurdle him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'd hurdle him. <laughs> Talking about Connor Chaplin, he's always the last one to come back into his own half. He is, isn't he? Just scored. He's on yeah. a go slow, isn't he? So he's on a go like, slow. As soon as he, he scored, whether he's scored is he, or the team scored, is he like an electric car? Is he recharging his batteries on the way back? Is that it? You know, you go he's, walk slow, charge your batteries up. Listen, he's a great lad, and he's not daft. He's no. doing that for some particular reason. He knows exactly what he's doing, and I think it antagonises the opposition no end. 
They're yeah. waiting. They want to kick off. Well, he's got. They've just got. They've just got to wait till he's, he's ready. He's got to be careful because he doesn't want to antagonise the referee and add a bit of time on sort of thing as well. No, usually the referee goes over and has a little chat with him over 10, 15 yards as yeah, walking back good. to the halfway line. Yeah. You know, and is it? But he, he's not a cocky player. He's not an animal no, player. Is it complete, complete opposite? He's a no. lovely, lovely guy. We've, we've, he's been on here and he was a fabulous guest, Great fabulous enough. first one. But he's he's it's one of them ones where. He, he he looks cocky, doesn't he? He he he's, he you know he gets up people's noses in terms of when the goals go in, and he just walks slowly back. It's a bit it's a bit of a strut, a bit Brilliant. of a cocky, especially when he scored. It's great, Brilliant. isn't it? Yeah. But we we love to see that. We love Brilliant. to see Connor Chaplin score, and we love to see town players do that. But yeah, it gives us gives us a chance to get our breath back as well. Yeah. Well, we've got to say how well uh, Nathan Broadhead's done, and Wes Burns. He gives us that great shape and pace down the right hand side. Davis has got the ability to put. Crosses in, you know, for for ninety minutes solid. But goes a lot. Of no, ground. he's not on for ninety minutes all the time, Russell. He's days. not. You know, that's <laughs> the only thing. He's just got to just got to man up a bit and yeah. get a lot of ninety minutes under his belt. It's amazing. And, uh, it's amazing. The last ten minutes, how many times he just goes down on the far side of the pitch you know, when we're winning. You know, it just seems to be a, a strategy. You know, we're winning. Go down. Yeah. Waste a few seconds. I don't know. Perhaps I'm being cynical. Uh, perhaps you are. Perhaps you, I am. You're getting cynical in your old age. Absolutely. But you never see. The centre half's getting taken off after sixty-five or seventy minutes, do you? No, no, and I you think don't see Burgess and Wolfie going off. After. That's right. I mean, you don't you don't make substitutions when you know when you've got a corner against and things like that as well. So no. you know, there's a sort of unwritten rule in many aspects. But talking of substitutes coming on, um, when you when you uh, I saw the England the other day play and they're. And they 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 brought on Saka, who's a substitute against Scotland. I mean, imagine Andy Robertson; he's been up a, yeah. he's been up against really talented talented players, and all of a sudden Saka comes on. Yeah, fresh as Daisy, fresh as a Daisy. Ipswich can bring on really good substitutes now, who yeah. make a difference. Obviously, well, Freddie with a Cardiff game, massive massive difference. You know, and you can call it your your finishing team or, or whatever you want, but you know, to be able to put five players fresh. With the last 25, 20 minutes to go, 15 minutes to go, that is that's a massive asset that we have at our dispo, uh, disposal now. Yeah, I mean, when the Cardiff game, when um, the manager Kieran McKenna, and again, credit must go to him, when he did he make three changes at one time, his second substitution, I think he put all three of the new lads on, I Hutchinson, think so, yes. Williams, yeah, and um, and somebody else, and you thought, crikey. Taylor. You know, Taylor, you, you know, and you went bang. Straight away, we get another goal. Brilliant. Yeah, because, it, I mean, the way that we play, it's all about momentum as well. We always seem to start games pretty strongly and then start the second half pretty strongly. So the players obviously responding to, to what the manager said or what they, what they feel just before kickoff. So that's yeah. that's really good. But, you know, you're bringing, on, you're bringing on players like that, and it must lift you, as especially as defenders. You, you very rarely get taken off. That some fresh legs are coming in ahead of you as well. You yeah. know, you know, it's 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 great because it offers variety uh, and players come off and they seem quite yeah. happy to come off, sort of thing. I'd be disappointed, uh, but and you would be disappointed. But it's that's all part of the game now. The game's evolved, yeah. isn't it? With with all the big squads and the substitutes and and all these kind of things. So, but do you remember it when we played? You know, and you get into about the eighty minute mark in a game. And the opposition suddenly take the centre forward off and put a fresh centre forward on against you, yeah, with fresh legs. Yeah, with fresh legs. But God. with that, for me, that would be you've won the battle against him. He's been taken yeah. off, so you have got to deal with this guy. So you're going to let this guy know straight away <laughs> he's in. A, he's, there's only ten minutes to go, and he's going to get the full, you can give the him a full, wallop. yeah, the full wallop, yeah. But then, no, I used to love that when they used to go off. To, yeah, that was a real credit. And when they used to change formation as well, yeah. I love that. That's a, that's. It shows you're doing your job job really, really well. I, uh, would you liken Connor Chaplin at all to Gatesy, the way Eric used to play in our setup? Well, he's far more attractive than Eric Gates is, by the way. Well, who isn't? He's still chewing that wasp, Eric, I think. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah, uh, Mr. Punch. <laughs> he's funny. That's, that's, that's a bit harsh, <laughs> Eric. Uh, nothing to do with me, pal. No. Sorry, Eric, but, you know. No, you're not sorry. No, I'm all. not sorry at all. No. Yeah. He's, no. uh, he's the loveliest guy in the world. He's like, he's like Connor, you know, he's just. Yeah. He's, he's funny. He's he's, great. he's, he's really funny, yeah, Eric. He's, he's and, not um, changed. No, not changed at all. Remember Paul Mariner when we had the wake with Paul Mariner at the yeah. um, at, at the club, and, yeah. and he was there. We had a riot, didn't we? It was. It's good fun. Uh, Alan Brazil was there. It was just Cali. It was just the most amazing sort of 
respect for Paul and we're talking all the old stories and things like yeah. that. And there's so many stories. But that's what you have. And I think this this town squad has that in 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 bundles. It has the the camaraderie, the spirit, you can see that. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not too sure about promotion this year, but I'm thinking, you know, they are good they are a credit to the to the town now. The whole club is really come on leaps and bounds, but the spirit that he's forged, Kieran McKenna, and you know, we've got to talk about Kieran because he's yeah. he's been instrumental, he's been the key to getting everything really going fantastically well this season. Yeah. I think I think they're gonna have a fun season. Where they end up, I, I'm not sure, but it'll definitely be uh, close, closer to the top than the middle, I think. Um, and it'll be fun. I think they're, they're, they're realising that they're, they have to work hard. Physically, the games are going to be hard for them. You've got to be prepared to roll your sleeve, sleeves up, put your big big boy shorts on and get out there and you know dig a result out like they did against Cardiff. And when you talk about Kieran McKenna making decisions from the, the touchline like he does during the game and it pays off for you and making substitutions doesn't always work, you know, but you have to make them sometimes. And if you don't make them, that is a way of like chickening out sometimes. Do you think that the, the managers now, um, do you think that they have a, a sort of plan before the game? Because you can make... You can make there's there's three you have three options mm. three chances to make substitutions you can yeah. you can put how, how many you want on so at three times so you, you use the five subs up in in three three sort yeah. of lumps so do you think that they sort of plan they're going to take this and going to do that and going to do that or it, for me it wouldn't work like that you have a plan it was it's got to be as it happens on the pitch and you relate yeah. to that I would think they're probably as it happens on the pitch because when he's got um, Martin Pert alongside him and uh, the he's rest got, of Remember, staff. he's got the he's got the iPad as well. Every got the every iPad, every all manager the analysis has, stuff. has the analysis. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and they might start getting a bit of feedback that one of the players is is struggling a little bit, a little bit tired. Um, Would you say that to the manager? Would you say that to Bobby Robson, Gaffer? I'm a bit tired. Can you take me off, please? No, nope. <laughs> no, nope. I would definitely not say that. Nope. I think, he'd say, I think he'd say, go out those doors, those gates at the bottom of the drive, he'd never come back. No, it was usually shouting at somebody, so you never got a chance to say anything to him, did it? No. Um, no, I, I, but I, I really do like what um, Kim McKenna is doing. More with his players and assembling a squad of players there that, that can get the job done. Not only from what they do on the football pitch, but what they're doing as a team um, with the foundation work away from the ground, how they all go to um, the, the group sessions for the foundation of the, the local schools and everything. And, you know, talking to one or two, two of the lads, they, they are all more than happy to do it. It isn't as if anybody's having to be asked two or three times if they would mind doing this. You know, they are all of the same sort of... Uh, and frame of mind yeah, and mentality yeah. that no, we're all in this together we all go and support the schools we all support the foundation we all support the community that we're playing in and they are reaping the benefits by getting some fantastic support back from uh, the sort of crowds that we haven't seen for a long long time and also as well because they very rarely get days off now as Connor was saying mm. that they, 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 they're in virtually every day yeah um, they then go and do the the community stuff and the foundation stuff on top of that as well. Yeah, so it's yeah. a, it's it's a great credit to them, yeah. and they are good. In, they are good ambassadors. We w weren't very good ambassadors if you look at the amount of alcohol we had, no, but we certainly we supported we, the pubs. We, we certainly supported the pubs of the yeah. community. Yeah, <laughs> they did a roaring trade. That's why so many have closed there. <laughs> Well, when Especially we, with the beat. It's, it's funny if you look back to how many pubs have closed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's, it's, the Bloomin' Fuchsia. Remember the Bloomin' Fuchsia? Bloomin' Fuchsia's gone. Oh, the Ipswich Arms. Gone. Ipswich, Ipswich Arms. Arms is gone. That was, oh, that was dear, a, oh, dear. Do you remember that night? That little debate we had in the Ipswich Arms about why things were going so wrong? Yeah. I can't remember, but yeah, it, was, remember. it seemed to be a good debate at the time, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, it seemed yeah. to work. Yeah, Gatesy was a, spokes, a spokesman there. He got things going, didn't was he? he? Gatesy. Yeah, Mr. Punch. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he had to get a bar stool to stand on, but I yeah. mean, it was great. Yeah, yeah. very good. But that, that's where it was a little bit different. I mean, we only had about 15, 16 players in our first team squad. Yeah, you know, so it was down to us to sort it out. You know, and 
we used to have the odd punch up in the changing room or on the the, the practice ground. Um, and a lot of things were sorted out between the players before management ever got involved in it. And on that occasion, we weren't playing very well. We decided we'd have a, a bit of a team meeting, um, a little bit like Brian Robson used to do in the Manchester United days. He used to have captain's club or something like that on a Wednesday. This was just a, on the spur of the moment visit to the Ipswich Arms and it was a long night. Yeah, the, I can't remember that much about it of course yeah. a bit vague but it seemed to work anyway so yeah, but I think it does it, things like that do and I think I think the players do get together they do have they do, do go out and do things together with the families as well but the thing about what we had obviously we were we all lived in Ipswich and around Ipswich mm. was, you know Laurie's lived in Lowestoft and Woodsy with Clive Woods was further up the county and towards Norfolk and things like this so but but it, you, you were there on on tap sort of thing and the players nowadays are there are here I yeah. think that was one of the things that Kieran instigated was that players must be, you know, must live here. Yeah. Um, you can't have people travelling. I mean, you look at, you know, David McGoldrick used to travel down and things like this and got back problems. And, you know, it's it's an unnecessary risk to take. So they have to stay, which I think is really, really good as yeah. well. Talking about travel, mm -hmm. can I just have a uh, Fred Olsen logistics moment? Yes. Was sponsored by Fred Olsen? This, this is, is the, the moment. moment. This, is, this is the Ipswich town on this day. Go on, sponsored by Fred, Fred Olsen. Olsen Logistics. Saturday, the 13th of September, 1947. Oh, I remember it well. The Blues registered a then record away victory with a 5 1 thrashing, thrashing, that is, thrashing. of rivals Norwich. Excellent. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Great audience, great audience. Keep it going, you are awake. Stan Parker set town on their way with a goal in the first minute. Was that Tommy's father, Stan Parker? Doesn't say, does it? No. It doesn't say. Well, I, Stan don't think it's, well I don't think done, it's true Stan. either. Yep. The well, first Mr. Parker. A 5-1 thrashing of rivals Norwich. Excellent. Love it. Love it. And that is your Fred Olsen logistics moment of the night. <laughs> on this day. On this day, Ipswich Town, on this day. Fantastic. 13th of September, yeah. 1947. 47. Yeah. That's yeah. about, what is that? About 10 to 8, isn't it? Something like that. Something like 1947, that, yeah. 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 Quarter to yeah. 8. Yeah. 13 yeah. minutes to exactly. Excellent. Yeah. No, it's, they are, there is a good book. And, it, it, you know, you look back, there's, it's, clubs have always got, well, they always have history. They have fans and, and history, the two things they'll have. So it's always good to look back. Yeah. And you look, you look back to obviously help yourself going forward. And I think Kieran's very, cognizant of the of our of our past and what we've and what everybody's achieved for the club as well because it is a great club well the club has great history doesn't it mm. you know with the managers you know two england managers uh sir alf sir bobby um absolutely wonderful times you know and that's just part and parcel of the club and it's nice to it's nice to be going down there again watching twenty eight thousand people thirty thousand people um Cramming into Portman Road, the, the 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 new pitch and the the sound is looking fantastic. So yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah, but we're thoroughly enjoying it, and um, we're getting the wind up from the audience here. They think they've had enough. They need a a break of some description. So we've yeah, sorry about there's only two of us here, but we've. I think we've talked uh, long and hard and given our, our fact. We could talk forever about, about the club as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we could do, but the team and the club at the moment are doing pretty well. And they're in safe hands as well. They certainly yeah. are. Same as this show is in, in safe hands and we'll be back with the regular crew yep. uh, next week. If they're allowed. If they're allowed and if they if they deem to return and want to return, yep. perhaps, perhaps they've got away, <laughs> think they've had enough. Yeah. I don't know. Please don't mistake me for Mark Murphy <laughs> no, in this corner. <laughs> no, please do. Please don't. But, no. but it's, been, it's been great. We've had a chat. I think we've, um, uh, we, we love the show. We love coming here. Yeah. Can't keep away, so, so to speak, but yeah, it's been, it's been brilliant. So I hope, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's not the usual, up to the, possibly the usual standard, or you may think it's better. Let us know. Subscribe or press the like button yep. if you, ha if yep, you have both. liked it. Yep. Yeah, yep. Please like, please subscribe. No keepy uppy this week either. No, and if you haven't liked it, still keep pressing the like button, please. <laughs> our, our thank you. Our sponsors will be very happy <laughs> with that. But thank you very much, everybody. Have a good have weekend. A good and we look forward to the games at the weekend and next week as well. Take care. Bye-bye. Up a town. Up a town. Up the town. Up a town. Up a town.